So over the years of making content in general, we typically have to deal with licensing for music and audio and stuff like that. And a lot of the times we would put music into a video and then down the road, it could be months or years, uh, something will happen where someone will either want to know the song that was used next, they want to use it in a different project, or you have the unfortunate uh, copyright claim thrown against you. And it's not always easy to go back and reopen that file or taking the time and having an Excel spreadsheet, which I had to do for a couple of projects and write the time code of when songs came on, when they went off and what the song name was, right? And the licensing and everything else that uh, came with that. So I really wanted to find an easier way. And I, I try my best to always find the path of least uh, resistance or path of least friction, whatever. I, a lot of the times I always try to find whatever that path is uh, so that, you know, while I'm working or if it's cause it's always like extra work that is never really utilized until it's really needed, right? But you could be doing it for two years and then never need it. And you're like, oh, why am I wasting the time doing this? Cause I, I never have to use it. So trying to find the easiest way to have that information was always uh, beneficial to me. So I, I came up with like a little workflow and I wanna show you guys because I actually just got hit with another uh, copyright claim, but I use all licensed music across all of my videos. So uh, I wasn't super paranoid about that, but the last uh, copyright claim, not this one, but the last one, um, it was uh, the, the song that they claimed cause that shows up on YouTube when I listened to it, it sounded like the exact same song that I had, right? And I was like, oh, shit. and then when I, I was trying to think of like at that time, who was I using to get music? And I remember going to their website and not being able to find that song. And luckily enough, I was able to go back and find those uh, DaVinci Resolve project files. Nothing was linked because everything's been moved, but I was at least able to see the names, right? Of what it was. And then I found out that the baseline in that song or portions of that song were made into a remix and the remix was what was being claimed even though that if you listen to the lyrics in the song they were slightly different i was able to get out of it because i had that information and i knew what song it was that um the the company that i was using at the time that they actually uh, still offered um now i i just had another one and uh i just got this email today i'll show you guys here quick so pretty much the people that uh, initially filed the claim i was able to provide them information and then they released it because they didn't have the rights to be filing that claim so um yeah so now i don't have to deal with that but i want to show you guys so that it's always good to have this information. And then I can show you how my rendered uh, project file uh, folder looks uh, with this also added to. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to let you know about my website, jrtv.com, where we have hundreds of different templates available for DaVinci Resolve 17, 16, and 15. All of them are backwards compatible with the newest version of DaVinci Resolve. If you haven't taken a look, the selection of templates is pretty diverse with everything that you would typically think when you think templates, everything from titles, transitions, infographs, logo stings, slideshows, video displays, video effects, compositing elements, as well as a bunch of color pre set tools specifically for DaVinci Resolve's color page. If you're interested in taking a look for yourself, there's a link in the description. What the, let's say that this was an edit. And as you can see along the bottom, I have my music in there. And the big thing that I want to do is I always want to put the music on its own separate track, right? Now there's two ways that you could go about doing this. You could either highlight everything, right click, and then color it. But what I like to do, because I'll have like a bunch of like little chop things chopped up, I just like to leave that as the music track. And if you have sound effects, you can have like the sound effects track and everything else. But what I like to do is go over to the track itself and we're going to right click in here and change the track color. So let's change this to apricot, sure. So now all of those, uh, anything that goes into that track is going to be apricot. And then what I will do is we come up here to the edit index and this is what's going to have all of the information time code for every single cut right so we're going to go into here and i'm going to come up to this little three dots here and we're going to then go down to show clip colors and we're going to then go into apricot and all this is going to show 
is all of the music that I have licensed from Artlist. Little small plug, if you guys are looking for music, I can give you two additional months on your uh, subscription. Uh, link is in the description to all the services and stuff that I use. And then uh, there's another one in there too, where you can get a free trial to the other uh, subscription service if you would want that. But anyways, so we have our music here. And now that we have uh, the edit index just showing just the music, we can now go into our media pool and we'll right click on our timeline. So up here it says which timeline I'm in. I'm on timeline two. Here's my timeline two. We're gonna right click in here and then go into timelines and then export. And then we're going to come into here and export index. When we do that, it's going to ask us where we want that to go. I will save that. And then, so now, for my archiving, I have just this. So I have the video, the thumbnail for the video, time code. So if you do like YouTube time code, I, I put that in here. And then I have this CSV. And then I have a little CSV uh, program here that I like to use if we ever need to look at CSV files. And I can open that up quick. And then in here, we can see the time code of when it comes on and when it goes off. And I have a list of all the tracks that I used for that video. So this is a nice little way. So if I get a copyright claim, I can go back and say, okay, this is what it was. I have my art list license, like the file that they give you or whatever. And then I can just show that and say, okay, these are the tracks that I use over these times in that project so that I know what the songs those are. Cause a lot of the times you, you, you make so many videos every week, you don't remember what the songs are. Uh, and I, I, this is just super, super simple. This is the simplest way that I personally could find to get this whole project, like to be able to archive this information and then not have to use, go into DaVinci Resolve and make sure I have the project file and, and, and all that stuff. This is like super simple way. Obviously you don't have to use this program. You could really open this in just about anything. I mean, you just throw it in Google or I can use uh, LibreOffice or whatever it may be. And I can see that CSV file cause it'll be anywhere, right? So I just open this up and then the information's right in there as well. So. There's, there's, there's a ton of different ways that uh, you can look at this, but I felt like this was the simplest way to uh, be able to put a very small file in there and then be able to uh, recall that information. Like I said, making the workflow as simple as possible, the least friction to get whatever the information is will make you have, will, will, it's a lot easier to, to do this extra work that at times feels like it's pointless until you get a copyright strike and or a copyright claim and then you have to actually go in and, and find that information so just because i just recently got hit with one uh i said you know what i need to show you guys how to do this because um yeah it, it is definitely a breath of fresh air to know the exact files and the other thing too is uh with these files i mean i can just open it in here as well the big thing to that I always do is I always leave the files the way that they're named um, from wherever I'm downloading them because they typically will always say like art list or epidemic sound or whatever it may be. And if it doesn't, when you download it, put that information in there so you know uh, where it came from. Um, but yeah, that's how I personally archive it. Uh, but yeah, hopefully this kind of, you know, makes things a little easier, makes you sleep easier at night. You don't have to stress over being able to fight a copyright claim and being able to show for the, uh, the licenses on the media and knowing the exact songs that you used and, and who uh, you got them from. So with that being said, I think that kind of concludes everything here. I hope you guys learned something with this and until the next one, guys, peace.